Hello, I'm Linda and this is No Frills ASMR. I have pulled out my antique typewriter. I think I've had it in maybe two, maybe three videos. This is a 1937 Remington 5 typewriter. This is a real pretty one. I have fixed it and cleaned it, put a fresh ribbon on it. Um, but I don't actually plan to type on this typewriter because it's pretty loud. When these keys smack all the way, it's loud. <laughs> but I also have a modern keyboard that I haven't even really opened yet. <laughs> so I'm going to open that one up. And then I thought we could look at this old typing book and do a little typing practice, maybe. But before that, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the keyboard on this typewriter, this Remington, but also the same keyboard that's on most um, modern uh, English language, I guess, typewriters, because some other countries have a little different design. Um, I, uh, oh look, I got these new bigger index cards. Look, see they're bigger than your average index card. <laughs> I just saw them and I was like, oh, I need that. So this typewriter keyboard is known as the QWERTY keyboard. And QWERTY comes from the letters that are here, the Q-W-E-R-T-Y, QWERTY. And this is a new Sharpie. Whew, does it smell? Wow. Wow, wow. <laughs> um, and the QWERTY keyboard was originally mm, invented or created <laughs> by a man named Christopher... Latham, I think you pronounce it, Shoals. It's a big name right there. I'm going to have to do it. Uh, Latham or Latham, Latham. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's an A or an M. I'm not sure. Um, so this is in the 1890s we're talking about. This Christopher Latham Scholes was a printer. Um, and that's when he started kind of tinkering with different me mechanics, <laughs> making mechanical things to help make his printing shop more, you know, productive. And I don't think that he necessarily invented the typewriter. I think there had been uh, versions and, 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 you know, there was typesetting going on, things like that. But he kind of perfected <laughs> the version that we know of now as the typewriter. And I believe in 1893, he made his first, you know, model of typewriter and he put the letters in alphabetical order and really quickly realized that if you have them in alphabetical order what happens with a typewriter let me say that this is one theory there are a few different theories on the QWERTY keyboard this is one and this actually does make sense to me but if you have certain letters close together Letters that get used together a lot, like T and H, if they were right next to each other, then what happens is, let me find two that are right next to each other. Let's do Q and A. They, oh, let's see if I can show it to you. Hold on, let me bring you over here closer. What happens with these old keys? And see how this one, if this comes after it, they can get locked up like that and get stuck. 
So when you have two letters right on top of each other and you're typing fairly quickly, they can get locked together. And it can still happen with a QWERTY keyboard. But my understanding was that he tried to make letters that are often used together, not have keys right next to it. So even though the E and R is together, they're actually two keys apart because the way they're made, they go here to here to, which one is it? Four. <laughs> so they go down. So you'd be three keys apart. So you're less likely to have them connect and lock up. Yeah, I think that's right. But anyway, so he had designed this style of keyboard and he was making typewriters that he was using in his shop and he was a journalist and later became a politician. But he um, was making typewriters and wasn't really having luck selling them from what I understand. So at a certain point, Remington, who was the gun manufacturer Remington, were post-Civil War, and they're kind of going, what are we going to make? Like, you know, <laughs> we might not need as many uh, guns because we're not having a war right now. So they bought out the patent and the, you know, design from Scholl's. So then it became the Remington Typewriter Company. Well, it was Remington. It was still just Remington, but they had a typewriter line. And they had the QWERTY keyboard on all their typewriters. But there were other brands that were making typewriters. Because like I said, he wasn't the only person working on typewriters. And there were like five companies all in competition with typewriters, but Remington was at that point the biggest company. So this is a theory, one theory on why QWERTY took off, was that Remington started training um, secretaries and the like <laughs> on using their type QWERTY, um, you know, keyboard to learn how to type. And they had typing classes that you could go to to learn how to type. And then when you got a job, the business would have to buy a Remington typewriter for you to use. And so that helped with Remington sales because it was sort of, you know, they're the ones doing the QWERTY board and everyone's trained on that because they were the only ones giving typing classes. So whole businesses would be, you know, only buying Remington, kind of like how Apple has their own. <laughs> they work with their own systems and everything. So you're kind of locked in. That was like the Remington QWERTY. But probably the biggest thing that turned this into the keyboard everybody uses is later on, I'm not sure what year. I think we're still in the 1800s. Eh, maybe not. Maybe early 1900s. But Remington and the other five typewriter makers merged and created Union Typewriter. And then they all across the board used the QWERTY keyboard. And so that was sort of the beginning of every typewriter having this and everybody who learned to type learned on the QWERTY keyboard. The other thing that I heard that might be a reason for it, and this I'm not quite clear on, but Morse code was something being used quite a bit at that time. And the operators who got the Morse code would hear the code and immediately type it out. And they had to be able to type quickly. See, that's the part I don't quite understand. So what they said is that they had to have the, 
this keyboard because it worked better for translating the Morse code. I'm not sure I understood that completely, but that's what I read. I feel like when I read it, I kind of understood it, but now that I'm trying to explain it to you, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that is where it came from, this style of keyboard. Um, now, like later on in the 1930s, a guy named August Dvorak came out with a competing designed keyboard called the Dvorak keyboard. And a lot of people think that's actually a better keyboard. And I think to this day, you can switch your keyboard on your computer um, to Dvorak and get that type of keyboard and be able to use it. And I could be wrong about this. I did not call my brother and double check, but I think at one point he told me he uses the Dvorak keyboard instead of the QWERTY because he is a computer programmer and writing code is easier on that board. I don't know. I could be wrong. If anybody knows anything about that, I'm not really clear on that. But what I do know is that in the 90s, I think, when I was you know, kind of looking for jobs and stuff. I wanted to teach myself how to type because back then, you know, <laughs> we all did this because you weren't used to typing all the time. And I bought a computer program. This is pre-internet, you know, you just had a computer and you bought programs and it was on like a floppy disk and it was Dvorak. I thought it was called Dvorak on typing and you practice typing and it was teaching you the QWERTY board so I don't know <laughs> that's the only way I know the name Dvorak <laughs> anyway so I have this where you can see how organized new keyboard <laughs> I think because sometimes when you get a new computer they give you a keyboard but I have a very old keyboard that's got like a number pad on. I'm so used to it. I like it. So I never update it. I think I have three new keyboards in the house. I don't know. I think my son also got one for work and he just doesn't use it. So I think I have one like that. But anyway, let's see what we have. this have cat hair on it. <laughs> I mean, it's been in the box. So here is a modern keyboard. So obviously you no longer need to worry about keys locking up, but we still, we still use it. One thing about modern keyboards, they have the F and the J have this raised, you know, that little raised bit so you can feel without looking where to put your fingers. That's something these old ones didn't have. <laughs> so anyway, I thought maybe what we could do is take a look at our touch method instructor for Remington writers, which I think came with this um, typewriter. And then maybe practice a lesson. Get ready to write. We're going for accuracy and speed. Don't punch the keys. Practice a quick, even stroke. Keep the fingers close to the keys. Don't pound with the forearm. <laughs> Use finger and wrist action, keeping the forearm steady. Don't tense your muscles or your arms and shoulders. Relax, relax. Don't make 
exceptions, always the same way, the right way. Any other method of operation produces confusion. Don't acquire bad habits at the beginning. Start right, keep right. And soon the details of correct position and style of operation will become automatic. Place the little fingers on the guide keys. Hold on a minute. Let's look at this real quick. On the guide keys. One thing, you know, that Scholes, apparently he designed this, Remington bought it out, and then later he made multiple changes and came up with better keyboards for actually you know, not locking the keys up, but Remington was like, no, I'm not interested. The only thing they did take out of his ideas, well, not the only thing, but one thing is the shift key. He came up later on with shift, which raises it. And then, oh, hold on, let me show you. Let me get it here. So when you hit shift, it raises your paper. This is where your paper would be. And then when you hit the key, Instead of it striking on the bottom, which would be the lowercase, it strikes on the top, which is uppercase. So it changes it from small letter to capital with the shift key. So that was an improvement that they did take him up on. All right, so let's look at our book here. Right here, they're giving us a um, fourth finger, third finger, second finger, first finger. So your first finger should hit all these because that's when you have the most control of. So they give you the most keys. I remember when I first started learning to type on the typewriter, the pinky stuff was what I had trouble with. I think when I first started learning to type, I mean, I can recall typing with a really old typewriter like this during elementary, but it was more for just fun, you know. But when my mom, it was when I was probably in, probably early, probably freshman year in high school, she was starting a law practice out of our dining room, and she had a typewriter that was the kind, it had like a little screen, this is how I recall it, and so you had like one sentence of memory, so if you made a mistake, you could clean it up, and then you'd press enter, and it would type that sentence. Does that seem right? I think that's right. And it was pretty massive, compu not computer, typewriter. And she would have me, she would give me, like, <laughs> things she needed typed, and pay me per page to type for her, I think, <laughs> if I recall. <laughs> I'll have to ask her that. I, I, that's my memory. I used to, like, check her papers for her. <laughs> Not like the written part, but the multiple choice. Anyway, all right, let's see. So, I have our F, D, S, A, J, K, L, and then colon and semicolon. So that's where you'd have your hands and then your thumbs on the space bar, just like you do. Maybe one day I'll actually type, but I'll warn you because it does get loud. If you actually type, it goes snap, snap, snap. I don't know whether to do one or not. Maybe not. If you guys want me to actually type, I could do that. All right. Let's pull out our... Oh, for goodness sakes. <laughs> Maybe one day I should think think through a video before I <laughs> okay so yeah so the difference is instead of looking at it you can just feel for those bumps and then you know exactly where your finger should go hold on I gotta move this so let's do lesson one two and three are stupid and boring because they're just F F F J J J G G G. I don't want to do those yeah, I don't want to do all that. <laughs> Con 
control of numerals. I, uh, that's probably kind of tricky. Exercise three. The following words constitute nearly one half of all ordinary printed matter. The ability to write them rapidly will add much to the speed of an operator. They can, with profit, be practiced frequently. Write each line five times. These words? Okay. Let's see what we got. Um, let's move our whole thing up a little bit so you can see it. I don't know. There's no way. No way to do this. You know, <clears throat> what word you can type using only the top letters? Let me ask it like this. The longest word that you can type using only the QWERTY UIOP letters. What is it? Okay, hold on. While you think about that, I will. Okay, that's better. Maybe I can do that. Let's see. D on them and make a butt any out today. We so very leave. Oops. Too hard. Okay, did you figure out the word? It uses only these letters, and it's the longest word you can type. And it has to do with what we're talking about today. <laughs> I'll keep going and we'll talk about it as soon as I'm done. As See, that was cheating. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Go part by. Whoops. Wait. Why am I hitting B with this finger? That can't be right, can it? <laughs> I have to look on that. Why am I doing that? You two do it with that finger. Why am I confused right now? I'm overthinking it. Bye. I feel so far away. Where was I? Not all other than often he ate some, though, whoops, I put thought, <laughs> though, oh my god, there have would said do, oh shoot, after their use those like Come with, may you give many his shift only has made. It's hard to type gibberish, I'll be honest. All right, so the word, that's the longest word you can type using only these top letters is T Y P E W O. Is that? <laughs> so cool. So apparently they've created a newer keyboard called Clack, K A L Q. That's for thumb typing. I haven't seen that. I don't know what it looks like. All right. What other exercises? That was crazy. Trying to type all like. Oh, this is operating instructions for our. Yeah, one day we could go over all this. I kind of did, I think, in a previous video, but we could do that. I actually have a really cool bright red royal. I might have a turquoise one. I kind of, I have a lot. I fixed typewriters. That's one of the, one of the things I do. <laughs> Jack of all trades, you guys. <laughs> what does this say? Okay, let's see what this says. Exercise for third and fourth fingers. Okay. Sounds hard. 
was spool swoop plaza saw laws <laughs> I'm overthinking it wall wax oops wax wait I am overthinking it where does X yeah W A wait W A X that's I don't use X much I guess <laughs> X wax okay wasp pool lasso Swap, plows, sloop. Oh, I know one thing I wanted to say. The whole debate, not even debate, <laughs> but like people say, oh, you can tell old people because they put two spaces after a sentence and one space after a comma and blah, blah, blah. You don't have to do And people get like angry about it. I will say, you know how you learn how to type? Um, and once you know how to type, it's very difficult to relearn on a new keyboard. So even if somebody came out with a better keyboard, probably most people who know how to type would be like, no thanks, <laughs> I got this one down. I don't need to learn a new one. You'd have to start at early. It's sort of like the metric system in the US. <laughs> And like, what is our system called? The Imperial or something? It would probably make life easier if we used metric because it all makes more sense. <laughs> but once you've learned something, it's hard to relearn or change. <laughs> and that's like the keywords. Why was I talking about this? Oh, the spaces between sentences. When you type on a typewriter, <laughs> Now I can't remember the reason, but there is a reason. <laughs> I think it's just because they get too close together. So you really had to do a double space, but that is a habit that takes time to break. <laughs> and for some people, you know, it's it's like not that big. I don't know why people act like it's a heresy or something. Like, okay, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why I brought that up, but obviously I'm personally offended <laughs> but whenever I type with my typewriter I always still do a double space because otherwise they're just too close in you know the sentences you know by the way speaking of being an old person I got a message from a listener well a girlfriend of a listener and it was the most polite and well-written message I've gotten in a long time. And I responded immediately because I was like, this person actually took the time to write this in a very nice way. And I just think, you know, I deal with people a lot in what I do. And some people need to learn how to write a message. <laughs> like, punctuation is there for a reason. <laughs> you might consider what you're writing and look at it and go, if I don't punctuate this, are they going to understand what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, that's beside the point. What were we doing? We're looking at this. Okay. What else can we type? Ba -da -ba 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 um, let's type a real sense. If you have applied yourself whoops, with reasonable diligence whoops <laughs> to the lessons and whoops exercises proceeding by this time you should be able to get along fairly well on your new You are hardly or could, I don't know if I spelled that right, <laughs> could hardly expect to be an, that's weird, or could hardly 
expected. Oh, okay. N expert typist in this. guys type on your phone with your thumbs or like this because I type like this <laughs> I try to do thumbs when I'm like in public to look cool <laughs> but I screw it up Ugh. this is a pretty nice feeling typewriter typewriter keyboard actually That's all I have to say about this. <laughs> Can't think of anything else. Remington Streamline Portable with self starting paragraph key. Oh, yeah, the self starting paragraph key. It's a tab. That's what that is. It bumps you over five spaces. Have tabs gone out of style? Do people not indent paragraphs anymore? I just don't even know. I live in the past. <laughs> Other Remington models for specific writing needs. Well, I'll look through this, but I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs> this Remington Speed Portable, a Remington Noiseless Portable, a Remington Deluxe Noiseless, a Remington Noiseless Dust Model, Noiseless.
it in. 